Good, so welcome back and in this video let's talk about chaining anchors. And so we said chaining anchors is for when our desired state is very far removed from our present state. So the example that we uh, use during the training is procrastination to motivation. So the client is procrastinating and they would like to end up at motivation and essentially getting going on this thing that they might be procrastinating on. So you can identify the undesirable state. So example procrastination. And we're going to identify the state that we want to end up in, which for our example we'll use motivation. Now we've got those and we said that they're quite far apart or far removed from each other. Now we want to design the intermediate states. And so there's a few requirements that we have for the intermediate states. So we said there's some important things to consider when we actually design the chain. So we need to understand what's the first and the last state. So what's the state where the client currently is at? And what's the last state? So where do they want to end up at? So as an example, procrastination being the first state and motivation being the desired state. Then we need to consider some criteria for the intermediate states. Now, the second state can be towards or away from. So towards what you want or away from what you don't want. We said that the second to last state should be a towards state. The next state must have movement. So each state that you're moving on to must have movement. So doing or having has movement. Being typically doesn't have movement. So somebody's saying, uh, you know, the state of nirvana, or I'll just be so relaxed. That typically doesn't have enough movement. It's not going to be strong enough to, to get the client to move forward to the next state they need to be at. And so we need to consider what will be a sufficiently intense enough state to move the chain forward onto the next state. And mild interest, well, that typically is not going to be strong enough. I mean, have you ever been mildly interested in doing something and at the same time just not been motivated to do it? The state should also be self-initiated. And so an example here is if we consider shame. Shame is typically not self-initiated. Normally for you to feel shame, there must be somebody else around. You know, or somebody else should be aware of what's going on. So shame normally is not self-initiated. The state must not be how they currently do it. So as an example, if the client says, well, you know, something like, uh, I'll, I'll feel this, this pressure from the looming deadlines. Well, do they currently experience that? Yeah, they probably do. And it's not working for them and they're not getting motivated to do what they need to do. So it shouldn't be what the way that they're doing it currently. Also, we don't want any of these states to include major negative emotions. A couple of reasons. First of all, when we get rid of the negative emotions, this is going to interfere with the chain. And second of all, well, we just don't want to install negative emotions. You know, we'd rather want to get rid of those. Okay, here's some examples of the intermediate states. Let's talk about away from states. So these are typically things that we say that the client doesn't want, eh? or something that they want to move away from. Nobody likes being bored or confused. Uh, watch out for confusion because it can be stuck for some people. So also watch out for frustration and irritation. You know, the remember I said it's words that the client uses, but also look at how they actually say it. What, what's their, you know, so if somebody says, nah, I get frustration. Sure, that'll work. But somebody gets, I'm so frustrated. And it seems like there's a lot of charge behind there, then that probably is not a good state for the client to be using. So pay attention to what the client is saying, both verbally and non verbally. How about some towards states? Well, what about curiosity, excitement, enthusiasm, desire, and so forth? Now, personally, I like to throw in the word extreme. So extreme curiosity or extreme excitement. Again, it's not always right for everybody. That's a state I like to use, and it works very well for most clients. As I say, not everybody likes it, so go with what your client says. So as we decide which are these states that we're going to anchor for the client, 
we're going to anchor each one of them at least five times. You see, one of the problems with chaining anchors, if the chain doesn't carry through, it's because the chain collapsed somewhere, you know, or the chain didn't actually follow through. And so you've heard the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So you want to make sure that each state is sufficiently intense enough. So hence why we're going to stack each state five times for the client. Then you're going to test each one. And so you're going to test each state, make sure that this client goes into the state, and then you're going to chain them together. So how do we chain them together? Again, you're going to see a live demo after this. But you're going to go from one state, and as soon as the client goes into that, you go to the next, then to the next, then to the next. So you're going to go from procrastination, as soon as the client peaks, you're going to fire intermediate state 1 whilst holding on to procrastination. And then you're going to release procrastination. Then you're going to fire intermediate state 2 when the first intermediate state is at its peak. And then as you fire intermediate state 2, then you will release intermediate state 1. And then when intermediate state 2 is at its peak, you're going to fire motivation and then you'll release intermediate state 2. And of course, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to test. And so to test, you're simply going to fire procrastination and the client should be carrying themselves through each of the states so that they end up at motivation. So essentially, each state is going to peak by itself. So none of the states are actually ever peaking at the same time. As the first one peaks, you fire the second one. And as, that's, as you're firing that, you release the first one. As the second one peaks, you fire the third, and then you release the second. And as the third uh, peaks, then you're going to fire the fourth. And whilst that's, you're firing that, you're going to release the third. Now, here we've got four anchors in this chain. I would say typically four is the number that we'd be working with. I've done a chain of anchors with three. I've done a chain of anchors with five. But most often, uh, four, four anchors in a chain is sufficient. Also, if you have too many anchors in the chain, you know, it's quite possible for your chain to fall over or to break and for it not to carry through. So, uh, so typically, you know, four states are enough. So let's have a quick look at a, at a live demonstration and then you can see this in action. So let's just first get an idea here of what are we going to do. So you've got procrastination. Yes. And you'd like to move to motivation. Is that okay? Yes. Be motivated again? Yes. So what's going to get you off of procrastination? So we've got procrastination mm -hmm. to irritation mm -hmm. to extremely passionate mm -hmm. to motivation. Mm -hmm. And that works for you? Yes. Fabulous. Good. So... We're going to do a process called chaining anchors, and that will necessitate that I touch you. Would that be okay? Can you remember a time, a specific time, when, you know, when you procrastinated? As you go back to that time now, just remember that time when you procrastinated, floating down into your body, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feeling those feelings now of procrastination. You just procrastinated. Good, so what do we do? We broke state, eh? Okay. So... Can you remember a time when you felt irritated? As you go back to that time now, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feeling those feelings, that irritation right now, feeling that irritation now. So, can you remember a time you're extremely passionate, extremely passionate, as you remember that time now, see what you saw, hear what you heard, feeling those feelings right now, that ex extreme passion. Can you remember a time you were totally motivated, totally motivated, totally motivated as you float down into your body see what you saw hear what you heard really feeling those feelings right now total motivation good for you so what have we done now we have anchored each state so now we want to test each state is that fair okay so now we have tested each individual state and so now we want to chain the states together okay so Again, I want to make sure that my hand's not going to be touching and I can just come down on the knuckles whilst I'm paying attention to my client. Hmm. 
Okay, yeah. So now we've chained the, uh, the anchors together. And so now we're going to fire the present state, which is procrastination. And then the client will actually carry themselves through to motivation. So let me ask you this. Now how do you feel about procrastination? You know that old state of procrastination? No. So imagine a time in the future which, you know, if it happened in the past, you may have been tempted to procrastinate, and what do you do instead? Now what I'm going to do instead. Yeah. I'm going to get down there and get my passion and do it. Good for you. Good job.